Okay, so welcome to the session on how to read a head CT. This first session is going to deal with how to exclude hemorrhage in the brain. Why is excluding hemorrhage so important in the brain? So in the ER setting, basically, there's three main indications for a head CT. The most common one by far is trauma. If you have trauma to the brain and there's internal hemorrhage, it's definitely something to want to know about because that's going to change management. So that's why I'm looking for hemorrhage there. In the setting of possible stroke, which is probably the second most common indication, uh, you want to exclude hemorrhage because hemorrhage is going to stop you from being able to use TPA to treat that patient for their stroke. So that's actually the goal there. A secondary goal would be to try to confirm findings that would in indicate uh, a ischemic infarct, and I'll show you how to do that in another video. Then kind of the third uh, most common indication is going to be the worst headache of all time. In that setting, I'm really trying to exclude subarachnoid hemorrhage as cause for the headache. So really, every single case I open up, I'm really the first thing I'm doing is trying to exclude hemorrhage because that's a lot of value I can add to that study. So how do I do it? So let me show you what I have here. I've got an axial CT. This is non-contrast. This is in the uh, 2.5 millimeter slice thickness. First thing I do is I kind of zoom in a bit so I can really get a good look at the brain parenchyma. And what I'm trying to do is I'm looking for anything hyperdense. Uh, so hemorrhage in the brain, if it's acute hemorrhage, it's going to be uh, a kind of a jelly-like clot, and it's going to have a density of about 70 to 90 Hounsfield units. In contradistinction, the brain parenchyma is about 40 to 50 Hounsfield units. So I'm going to I'm be able to catch that hemorrhage as something that looks hyperdense relative to the brain. And the way I do it is I basically just focus in on one area of the brain and just kind of roll, roll up and down, looking for that hyperdensity anywhere within my field of view and then going to characterize it later. Now I'm basically looking back here, just run all the way down, coming back up, and looking for anything hyperdense to catch my eye. Basically looking over here, uh, right frontal now. And I kind of do one scan, kind of going right down the middle. And again, I'm just looking for anything hyperdense to catch my eye. I'm also going through these ventricles, looking in all the ventricles, the frontal horns, the atrium, the occipital horn, the temporal horns. Going on both sides, and then kind of definitely getting a good look at the basilar cisterns, getting a good look at the fourth ventricle. Looking for anything hyperdense to catch my eye because I'm trying to exclude hemorrhage. And there's a couple of things that might fool you early on, that things that look hyperdense but you're not hemorrhage. Definitely these vessels you can see here, the MCAs and the MCA cisterns. You don't want to confuse that for hemorrhage. Down here at the level of the cavernous sinus, you don't want to uh, miss this or think that this is hemorrhage. It's just blood in the veins. And I've definitely been called before for these uh, for these dural sinuses, which are, the, the dura is somewhat dense, and also the blood within it can appear dense. So you don't want to mistake that for hemorrhage. And also right here in the ventricle is the choroid plexus. You don't want to mistake that for hemorrhage. Okay, so here's a case, and this is a non-contrast head CT. And this is, this is a very obvious case of, there's a lot of abnormality here, but I just want to give you an idea of what hemorrhage kind of looks like relative to the brain. You can see that it just has that bright color, which is even different than these cerebral venous sinuses we looked at before. It just has kind of a bright color and contradistinction to the normal brain parenchyma. And this is the kind of the, what you should be looking for to catch your eye. Now, once you see it, you can start to characterize, okay, where is it? In this particular case, it's definitely in the ventricles. Uh, you can see here in the lateral ventricles and also the third ventricle here. If you come down, it's definitely distending the fourth ventricle. Here it looks to be interparenchymal within the cerebellum, and it may indeed have been a hypertensive hemorrhage in the cerebellum, which then dissected into the ventricle. Okay, here's another case. This is a little less obvious. It's another elderly gentleman. This is a non-contrast head CT. Scrolling through it really quickly, you may not see a ton of abnormality as you did in the last case, but this is something kind of interesting. You can notice here, here on a soft tissue window, you can actually see quite a bit of scalp swelling here. And if you see scalp swelling, you want to look basically just beneath that, and then you can make out this hemorrhage here. There's some intraparenchymal high density interspersed in the brain parenchyma, and that's going to be a uh, coup injury. And definitely, if you see a, a coup injury, you can have contra coup injury, case basically the brain bouncing against the calvarium here and then bouncing back the other way. And indeed, you actually see some subtle uh, high density here, which ends up also being a hemorrhage. And of course, if you keep going through the brain, usually it's the high brain parenchyma that's involved. And you can see here some interparenchymal hemorrhage here, scattered, kind of patchy. And definitely here, this is a nice example of that subarachnoid hemorrhage. 
you can see here a normal solstice here, which is mostly full of CSF. And this is filled with hemorrhage, so that's definitely going to be in a subarachnoid location there. Here's another case. This patient experienced a traumatic injury to the uh, top of the head. And basically, I'll show you how I basically started off with this case. I do the same thing, scanning for hemorrhage. As I was coming up to the top here, I noticed this kind of linear, faint hyperdensity. And indeed, this was a small uh, traumatic hemorrhage here, a subarachnoid hemorrhage, filling these sulci. You can see that it's not a huge... Uh, it doesn't involve a lot of space, but really if you kind of tune into just that hyperdensity, you'll be able to pick this up. And that's like I said, this is why I spend the first 20-30 uh, seconds of every case really just scanning up and down, looking for anything hyperdense. Here's another case. This was a young patient that presented to our ER with uh, acute onset of the worst headache of his life. And basically flipping through these images, uh, very, very quickly basically notice this hyperdensity here, and this is the supercellar cistern. This should be all black. Uh, he has this hyperdensity here. It's tracking into this uh, right MCA cistern. You can see it here and here. There's some hyperdensity there, and some hyperdensity here tracking anteriorly in the interhemispheric fissure. And, you know, definitely down here you can see the, the cavernous sinus has a little bit of hyperdensity, but this this is at, completely abnormal here, here in the supercellar cistern. So this hyperdensity uh, in the being in the basal cisterns with the setting of acute head onset of headache, it's a uh, definite for subarachnoid hemorrhage. And basically within a few seconds, we were on the phone telling them that uh, this guy's got uh, ruptured aneurysm. But this is exactly the kind of thing you're looking for. You're looking for that hyperdensity in the midst of the brain parenchyma with the brain parenchyma being a lot less dense. Uh,